there are a lot of folks out there that don't uh, build a control box very often. Maybe this is your first time or your second time, and I thought I would uh, spend a little bit of time uh, try to give you some pointers. First thing we'd like to look at is uh, the design for the interior, the exterior, organizing your components by voltage uh, and by connection locations to keep wires and things short. And then, of course, by size. Now, it's pretty likely that all three of these won't uh, fall right into place the way you want. But um, even if you uh, don't uh, get it perfect the first time, take some time uh, to do those sorts of things ahead of time. Prior planning is worth a whole bunch here. So in the last things we're going to do is some drill and tap, mount and wire, and then I'm going to go into some testing. First and probably the most important is to determine the layout of your control box. Now, one mistake a lot of guys make is they take and buy the box first. I would suggest that you download the manuals from each of your components and you make a uh, little cut paper or cardboard cutouts of them of the size and things that you want so you have the ability to uh, lay them out into place. I happen to have most of the components I use. I digitize them into a CAD program and you can see that I've got uh, this box right here laid out uh, the way that I want it to be. It seldom works this well. It seldom works this well on the first, maybe even the second or the third time. But if you spend some time to do this and get it organized the way you want, if you have wire duct like I use or DIN rail or uh, just need space for wiring or mounting other components, you want to make sure you have that in. Lay those out on a sheet of plywood and use that to determine the size of boxes. This is a real life version of the drawing that you just saw of the interior of that board. You can see that I'm organizing them by high voltage areas, medium and low voltage, trying to keep the low voltage areas as far away from the high voltage as I can. Also keeps my wires shorter, uh, which lowers cost, but more importantly than that, keeps the uh, amount of wire in the ducts down to a minimum, and I try to do everything that I can to eliminate high voltage wire and low voltage signal wires running parallel to each other and that reduces crosstalk. So in the long run, the more time that you spend planning this, the better that you'll, that you'll be. Once you have the interior components laid out, you're going to want to mount your fans on the outside so that they won't interfere with anything on the inside. And didn't mention this before, but I usually put all my heat producing components at the top. So intake air on the bottom somewhere central to the right and outflow with the fan near the top and usually on the side behind the hinge. So lay it out so that you can get a good airflow through there. Keep your heat producing items uh, hopefully towards the top. Lay it out, make a drawing. And uh, I turn these into drilling templates that um, on the metal boxes go on with magnets. Plastic boxes gets, get taped on, but you probably won't be going through all of that. Okay, I've got a little repositioning done on the camera. We're back at the be test bench, so you can see that I've got a control box here. I've got my little uh, control PC monitor. Uh, Centroid software is up and running. And the first test I'd like to do is show you I've got a little block of wood with these tiny, uh, these are just some switches I have laying around there. Uh, They've got a common, normally open, and normally closed contact. I've got these wired for normally closed. 
and they're just a simple switch that I use to test so you can see down here that I've got them set up for Z Y X and an e-stop so if I press the e-stop and you look on the screen you can see that it sees the e-stop and when I release it the same goes for you can see on the screen that the limit switches are working I can also if I pay attention to what's on the screen imitate the homing routine so it says it's moving the Z touch the Z comes over moving the Y the Y and to the X that's the order that they're set in and that's how you can do some of that homing setup another thing that you may want to test if you're having issues is from the keyboard pressing alt I which is your input screen and you can actually look on the input screen you can see one is highlighted there you can see it turns red when my limit is tripped same thing for Y and Z so there's just another way that you can do that when I go through and test these I've also got another another uh, group of inputs down here that are pre-wired for the user to connect to those have all been tested too okay I'm back at the machine I've got the limit switch testing uh, little block removed I've set my limits back to normally open because that's the way I'll usually ship them and one of the other things that we'll do is we'll test the motor so at the motor are options here on the screen we got incremental and continuous I've got it in continuous we'll start it slow and we can move the Y motor slow both directions we can go into fast mode fast and should we want to test the rapids from the screen control MDI and type in Y let's say 30 it's already in G90 mode press cycle start and it'll run at the full rapid speed back to zero so that's a little short test to do that and I'll usually do that with all the motors to make sure that they work one of the other tests that I'll often do is I've got auxiliary components in here if this customer were to have a spindle uh, this would be a VFD that would allow us to cut power to that contactor uh, this one is not being built for a spindle it actually has a router so I don't have a router sit right here but I do have an electric drill I've got a wire tie around the throttle or around the uh, the switch and I'm using a 25 amp S uh, solid state relay I've got this router channel hooked up on the screen to the flood so just by you clicking on the flood button you can see that the indicator light was going on so one of the things that you're going to want to do as you do these is double check all your voltages and make sure all these items are working be possibly before you put them on the machine hopefully this has given you a little bit of insight and a little bit of help towards your future projects thanks for watching